here today with Chris and Matt, owners and founders of Ennegrin Brewery. Guys, tell us, how did you uh, get started in this business? Mainly college. Uh, we drank a lot of beer in college. <laughs> and uh, I was an engineering major, so I decided to make a little brewery. And then Matt came to school the next year, and then we just started hanging out and brewing, and then that just kind of got out of control. And this is really. on LMU's cam campus? Yeah. yeah. So it was actually on campus the first year, my friend's dorm room on the stove, and then we went off campus the second year in the last two, I guess, in a, um, in a house. I actually met Joe that way. My other partner, Joe, played lacrosse with me, and he had a little garage in the back, and I had to move my whole system out somewhere. I moved into an apartment, and he just said, like, hey, you can uh, put it in my garage, and I'll, I'll brew with you guys. I said, all right, that sounds good. And we've been brewing every weekend since then. <laughs> That's awesome. So when the brewery was in the dorms, were you having to like hide that away from anybody? Or was it was, was everybody kosher because they knew you were going to provide some free beer for everyone? <laughs> they didn't know what we were doing really. And um, actually it's kind of funny because we had a little heat exchanger coil on the table one day in a big pot and we're you know, doing the whole um, boil and the uh, RA walked by and was like, oh, what are you guys cooking in there? We're like, oh, just making a cake right now. <laughs> it smells good. And then walked off and we're just like, yeah. Fine. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So it must have been a pretty big step from taking your, your homebrew system into, you know, purchasing that first commercial system. What was like the biggest challenge in, in going from, from being homebrewers to pro-brewers? Well, the nice thing we had was uh, with Chris being an engineer, uh, he was doing a lot of programming for his regular day job uh, at a biotech, so he was able to transfer a lot of that knowledge into our homebrew setup, mm -hmm. which became a full, fully automated 10-gallon homebrew system. So our homebrew setup at times was more automated than a lot of commercial systems. <laughs> uh, so when we started looking at systems to buy, we went, and he went down to San Diego and met up with uh, Premier Stainless down there, mm -hmm. he was able to actually hook up with them and start doing some work for them. Uh, so he was actually programs breweries now. Uh, but with that, you know, we were able to figure out how to set up our own system and we had a fully automated, or not fully automated, but more automated three barrel system than most people have. Um, so we were able to get off on the right foot there. I guess the biggest challenge for us is, was the construction part because we wanted to do a lot of it ourselves. Uh -huh. So figuring out, you know, we'd go to breweries and we'd be sitting staring at their floor drains, asking <laughs> brewers not about their mash temps or about how they're fermenting different beers, but sitting there saying, hey, how much did your floor floor drain cost? Like, <laughs> what kind of coving tile do you have there? And what? how do you put the FRP up and all that stuff? So that's the real challenging part for us. And we spent probably eight months building out our first facility because mm -hmm. we did the tiling, we did the FRP, we did the install of the system. Uh, we actually went down, Chris actually did the uh, the tack welding of the, the piping runs on oh, our wow. three barrel system. Uh, so we did far too much work to get it started than we probably should have, which we learned when we came to their new facility. We just said, you know, we'll just hire people to do it. Which, which we didn't. Which we didn't. <laughs> I was just better at it, so we did a lot faster this time. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Um, so which was the first beer that you guys actually like put on the menu to sell to the public? So our, our first, the first batch of beer we ever brewed on a commercial system was June 25th, 2011. Uh, that was our Protector IPA. Um, we brewed that just because we, you know, we were our first time on a system. A lot of times, uh, brewers on their their first run will do an IPA or a pale, something yeah. you can. It's got a little bit more flexibility as mm -hmm. far as because you're going to have mistakes that happen in your first runs. Um, your first couple months as a new brewery uh, on a new system, you're working out the kinks of the system. Uh, so we went with our IPA first, and then uh, two weeks or a week later, we did our uh, German style amber. Uh, which is an alt beer, uh, so that's a little bit more focused on the fermentation controls. So we used the first batch kind of a test run, uh, which turned out pretty good. Uh, it wasn't you know, amazing or exactly where we wanted it. We've kind of been tweaking it since, but uh, we were able to at least use that to figure out how the system works. That it ended up being a 20, 25 hour, 26 hour brew day, uh, start to finish. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. the worst experience. This is our first time commercial brewing and it was 26 hours. Wow. It was the, there were just things we hadn't like figured out, like you know, the burner wasn't really calibrated. We got in at nine in the morning, decided to clean the whole system out. Didn't know like what the times were gonna be. We're going from like, yeah, we just kind of light up the boil kettle, go sit in the spa in the backyard, and then we're boiling and brewing, that's about it. But, this was a little bit different. So I remember driving home 
with Matt, this is like probably eight o'clock the next day, and we're in the car together. We said not a word to each other. <laughs> we get into the parking lot of our apartment, because we were roommates then, and he just goes like, this is all it's gonna be, right? And I was like, yeah, it's gonna be. And that was it. <laughs> so it, it got better from that on. Yeah. But yeah, the last, bre the first brew we did, it was crazy because we were all working day jobs. And um, we'd work the whole day, get home at night, and then we'd keg and clean and work till like one in the morning, then go home. And then the weekends, it was me, uh, Matt, Joe, and my wife, um, girlfriend at the time, um, just working the bar. So we're working the bar and brewing. So it was just nuts for just the time. So. But that's what it is. <laughs> we're, we're doing all this kegging and cleaning in, I mean, we're working in regular professional jobs and yeah. we're doing all of this in business casual. I mean, we're coming <laughs> in, in dress shoes, khaki pants, button down <laughs> shirts, and sitting cleaning out a tank. And I mean, all of my clothes from then have yeast stains on them or beer somewhere. Like, shoes were just destroyed. So it was, it was, not the best way to do things, but it was it was fun looking. I mean, looking back on I mean, it, it was probably a good experience. But would I recommend doing it again? Probably not. <laughs> and you guys have clearly evolved since then. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah a little. <laughs> Just a dad. Yeah. But yeah, it de definitely <laughs> must be nicer to have the the bigger system that you guys are working on now. And I know you guys have a bigger tap room. You guys do a lot of events because we're here today for the Irish Fest. Yes, um, we're, we're doing uh, four large scale events a year, and those. Um, the ABC changed the laws last year, and now they're allowing Type 23 licenses to open up into their spillover parking ways or the alleyways and fence off, uh, so we can actually bring beer outside. Uh, so we do four of those big events a year, which this year is gonna be our Spring Fest called Frühlings Fest. Uh, it's a big German event, um, but we, we're start, that's our first year doing that this year. We do a Summer Fest, we do our big October Fest, and then uh, we do a Christmas Fest. That's our... Um, those are our Oktoberfest is probably our biggest event uh -huh. of the year. Uh, we did that last year. We have uh, floats outside. We all we dress up for every single one of them. So we got <laughs> Uh You know, we're a big European style brewery, and our focus is German lagers. So the Frühlings Fest and the Oktoberfest are that's really what, what our brewery is about. Um, so we go all out for those, and it, it really shows. And our Oktoberfest is is packed wall to wall, inside outside. We've got. Um, a log song competition for it. We've got some other, you know, Oktoberfest style games that we do outside. Uh, so those are pretty big. And then our uh, Irish Fest we've been doing every year. We just keep inside, um, but that's what we're doing. We're doing today. Awesome. And uh, you mentioned uh, you guys do primarily uh, German styles. Where did that come from? I mean, was it always a passion for German beer, or it's kind of always been our our passion. Um, just going back to college when um, Matt, Joe, and I used to hang out, we do this like we do market research night. It was kind of our excuse. Just <laughs> drink a ton of beer. I do but, a lot of that too. Yeah. Actually, so so we we go out and we just go pick a whole bunch of random beers. I forget the name of the place, but it was kind of mm -hmm. like the Bevmo of, of the time. They didn't have that back then. Um, it wasn't that long ago, either, but wasn't that either? No, no. Whatever. <laughs> it's, it's not important. <laughs> the most important part is the place had a lot of cool beer. But what we always come back with was like the German style beers, like Bach, Stoppelbach, um, you know, things like that. Never really any IPAs. We, never, we weren't really ever that into them, just for some reason. And um, we just started getting more into that style. And just the brewing aspects of doing lagers, it's a lot more. Like it's a lot more in depth with the mashing process, the fermentation, just everything, like you know, start to finish. So it was always something we wanted to like really perfect someday. Mm -hmm. So um, we started off with our alt as our, our main first beer and that was kind of the way you'd make a lager that wasn't a lager but you kind of treated it kind of like it. Mm -hmm. It's got an intense mashing process, ferment it cold, but um, it wasn't until we got into this brewery where we started getting into more of them. Um, I built this brewery around making lagers so I could have all the, the uh, mash step processes that we wanted to do it, and the uh, mixing tanks and so on. But Actually, we bought three extra tanks because I need to get one more bright tank in here. We just figured, all right, if we get one bright tank in, we've got to you know, shut the whole place down, roto hammer the floor out, get a welder in here. So we said, let's just get three of them so we'll have like a whole pack in at once. We'll have mm -hmm. some extra capacity. So when we had the extra capacity. We just said, all right, well, 
Now let's start putting some lagers in there. These tanks should be sitting here empty. We don't need them for right now. So let's just put some beers that can age out for a few months. Did that, and then we started realizing like, wow, these are awesome, and we're doing way better selling these <laughs> ones than anything else. So then recently we just said, screw it. Let's just make pretty much all lagers, and then we have a couple of ales too. So it's good. I mean, it's my favorite style of beer. Awesome. Well, um, so obviously behind us is the taps for the tasting room. You guys do beer to go in growlers, crowlers, everything? We do, yeah, one and two liter growlers. The crowlers we started doing uh, April last year, uh, which those have been amazing. Those are my favorite things. It's, it, it's a lot easier to get into canning without actually getting into canning. Yeah, which yeah. can be a little expensive. So, uh, so yeah, we just do those, uh, those three uh, for right now. And then we have our 22 ounce bottles, uh, which we started doing mid last year as well. Yeah, well, um, we appreciate you guys having us here today and uh, hope that this Irish Fest is the best one yet. So, um, cheers and happy St. Patrick's Day. Cheers, guys.